Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm pressured that to have an opportunity to show my secret how to coach um, singles. And make sure you get your pens and sit close a little bit when I do some technical drills like later on. And um, I think how to develop a, a single player is, um, I think Michelle Lee is the one who uh, age 20 will be qualified to Olympic 2012 in two events. But how we can do that? Okay, and when we coaching in Canada, it's like very hard for us to push the kids to train like six hours per day. How, how are we gonna work? It's like usually when I go out, when I see anybody who are, I can chat with Tracy, I can chat with Kenneth, um, Indonesian coaches, I chat with Gubajai, um, so many coaches that they're so good in the world, and I try to squeeze in and ask them questions. How come your wrist is so strong? How you can make the stroke so fast that you can create, you know, the power so hard? And uh, you commentating it on YouTube, a lot of um, uh, commentators are saying that punch clear, okay? Attacking clear. So when you have this kind of skill, how you can generate the power from your wrist? Okay, some people that they born, let's say Lee Jong Wai, like he is very good in physical and his speed is really fast on court. When we play Tai Chi, oh my God, it's like the skill is good, the footwork is skill, and all the Japanese girls, they run crazy on court nonstop. How we can coach a player in Canada to compete with those top players in the world, right? All coming from uh, Pan Am and Barbados, right? And how are we gonna do training these players with a very short time training, but you can generate the, the level to go up. Okay, so I will demonstrate it, um, three skill, I mean three drills that we usually do when we are in singles. Okay, the first one, I will uh, have three players come out. Okay, I'll, I'll introduce my little one, and I brought Rachel Chen today. Uh, she's 15 years old. Right now, uh, under 17, she probably triple crown in Canada. And uh, hopefully I will develop her and build her to become another good single players in the world. And uh, we have Talia is already developed from uh, a lot of coaches. And uh, we have Stanny, and then we'll work on skills and, and, and drills later on. And when you see the first drills that we want to do, give keep two. The first one we do is clear and drop. Very simple drills. We use these drills as like play against a lot of um, Asian players because they run crazy. They non-stop, they're very consistent. Like they hit the bird over and then they can changing the speed. They can add the deception. They can do so many things during these very basic clear and drop. But in Canada, if I tell you to do this drill, everyone will fall asleep because no challenging. It's like in front of two Malaysian coaches here, they, they probably know what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first one that we're doing it, we're based on three drills. This drill is particular, you two stand on one side, clear and drop, side by side. Yeah, two against one. We focus on, on these drills is you're looking for, when they clear and drop, you're looking for 40 shots, no mistake. Okay, and when you're doing it, they might see that no mistake, they try to no mistake, and they're feeding each other. But this is wrong. When you're doing this, make sure that you're in, in, including these drills, you have to see the consistency, deception, skill, and changing the speed and strategy. Okay? Now, like most of the time when you're doing single, you always have to go back to center all the time. Let's see what here we do. Running the player around, run Rachel around. Okay, see, this is a skill and strategy because like Rachel is not going back to center and then Stanley just make a little bit deception and then go cross it, that's why Rachel will miss. Okay, do another one. Cross, continue, make the drills go. You, get, you guys counting? 
as you see on the YouTube, most of the girls that, or, or the guys that they will always post it up, oh, how many times this rally? 40 shots, 30 shots, 7 shots. I remember one, uh, one time, I think the highest like Lin Dan play, Li Zhong Wai, is 97 in a rally. But no mistake. But during the rally in between, then you were talking about changing speed and deception, and then you know the positioning and strategy inside these drills. Can you do a little bit faster? Actually doing it. Okay, go, go. Looks like. Okay, so this is the first drills that we do, and we're according to these three basic drills, and we're training every day, um, you know, with Michelle's or some other single players and Stanley. So the second one that we'll do, this one is basically on training these, is like competing with some of the player that they can run crazy on court. No mistake, nothing, nothing special. Okay, second drills, um, we were doing defense and fun four corners. So most of the players that when they do this drill, after they clear, they never will go back to center. So they will leave the fun four corners empty. So when you're doing it, and I was setting these drills, it's like they will clear three times. In between those three times, then they will start attacking. Okay, they can do one clear and quickly drop and smash. Or when they do clear second time, they will do just in between. Within three clear, they will attacking you. Okay, so ready? So we go front and back. That's clear and drop. We do side by side, and this one has to be front and back. Clear it. One, two. Or three, then you're out. So they don't get used to it. And make sure that you clear it and go back to center. And when you're seeing these, they were expecting the, the player who are worker always come back to the center and get squat down and get ready for the front four corners. See, you can see Rachel's face. His eyes is her eyes is open up and get ready for the defense. Clear it. Clear it. Ready. Clear it, clear it, already. You don't have to be three, it could be one clear. Then you tell your player you can suddenly attack. You can see in that the most key things that when you're seeing the player, when they're working on it, make sure that they squat down lower, okay? And then the body tilt a little bit forward and so that they will get used to, to do that defense. Okay, when we're doing these drills, it's like you focus it on you playing someone who are offensive player. You know that, oh, this guy or from whoever, like which country, then there will be a lot of jumping, smashing. Those are the drills that you have to focus it on. If you play someone who are like more offensive, okay? When we play, let's say, PV Sindel or we play Carolina, we always have to work on these kind of drills to make, make the base lower and so that we can defense their smash. Get it? Okay, number three. The number three drills is like we call, we can, we can say it's a box game, but in between we have rhythm together. Okay, rhythm together and also you can set at the net, you can cross, you can push. But whenever you see you, whoever they're pushing, I want you to add the speed and you have to do the attacking. Like I don't care that you smash or you slicing or you do anything as long as you're going down. This is a drill, particularly if I'm Michelle Lee, I'm an offensive player. If I play PV Sindhu or you play Carolina, then this is a drill is good to work on because both will try our best to see that we can, whoever setting up, I will do smashing down. Okay, this drill has to be patience. Okay, well, you have to be patient. You have to, doesn't matter how many times that you're setting. You might set for 10 or 5. Okay, could be in this one in a while that you can push them. And when you see someone pushing up the bird, then you know that the chance is here. Then you're not going to clear. You have to go down. Because you clear first, they were smashing down. Is it clear? Okay, okay let's do it. Okay, let's stand you doing. Stand you go over there. So you both side can net, both side can push, and both side can smash. We call sudden sudden attack for this one. Hey, get get your racket up all the time when you're setting at the net. You can see um, the Danish player also use this one. 
they open their left arm all the time, try to cover up the full court with two, two, foot, uh, two step footwork. Do you get it? So when Sandy push it, you two can smash it too. So that he will alert that the other side will attacking. So you both, both sides are challenging each other. Has to change speed, you can't be same speed. Okay, once you see the bird pushing up, your footwork has to add the speed. Okay, yes. Follow, follow. Every time you smash it, you know that you're following up. Okay, stop. Okay, those are the drills that we are playing against someone. They are really like, you offense, I'm offense. I want to see who will get that. You will see this kind of like style of play when you see men in men's singles. Okay, um, and then one thing is I have to mention, that, like, the left arm, I find out when I watch the, um, the Danish play, like I watch Victor Exerson play, and maybe Anthony, their left arm is always keep it up really wide like this. Why is that? Because they keep the balance and then they also can generate power from the upper body. I will talk about these later on. Okay, that's all the three drills that you keep it. A very basic, simple one. If you put it on these three drills for your single player, work on it every day, then they will, they will progressively improve. Okay, thank you. And um, deception, I'm talking about second thing is talk about deception. Nowadays, um, Who's the number one lady singles? It's Tai Shu Ying. Um, they have a lot of deception. Like what the concept of the deception? Do you know? The concept of deception, I think most of the Asian coaches that they might know, the deception concept is like you making the opponent the rhythm. We go back to Tracy. Like why is she using the music to do the footwork stuff? Because in singles, we a lot of rhythm. Changing speed. How you can change your speed? By your hand by your stroke, right? You can see most of the time when they, when they see all the players that are from Asia or better country, you don't see them swing a lot, okay? They usually would generate the power from the, from the wrist, and at the end, they will use the finger to point into the corner, okay? Make the accuracy, okay? So the deception is kind of, you, 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 the deception is like playing at the second time, not the first second, the second sec second. Okay, so I need uh, Rachel. Okay, we usually will do these drills for the younger players, and I, I'm sure I, I have these drills. It's very easy for anyone, uh, even though you're not high level. Then you'll see the difference. Let's say the players were hitting back to me, and I'm feeding them four corners. Okay, you to see the difference that you're getting here, you're getting here, you're getting here. Okay, now most of the time with the concept of the deception is we same pace, okay? Same pace, make her run, right, run, go, sorry, run, run, be careful, you cover full, full court, run, okay, again, the deception only works when you come to longer rally, make her get used to your pace, then you have deception, that's how you break the rhythm, okay, and I don't know if you watch a little bit more, and people who are good in deception, they will not do it right away. Okay, and then other, other things is when we talk about deception is, you, if you all the time, a lot of players do a lot of, a lot of like this, like, why? Once the first second, you already play deception. Not gonna work. Then it will become your real stroke. Every time you do this, then you become a real stroke. Then it's not deception. Okay, we'll do one more time. And always, you can get it here, you can get it low. Again, we go longer rally, make her comfortable first, right? Then push, sorry, okay? Then you little bit, little bit stop, then you already break the rhythm. Okay, you come over here. I'll tell a little bit more concept. When, when we are fighting, right, we're fighting, when we're fighting, you can punch me, I can punch you, but I punch you first because I'm your coach. So you see me, look at your hands up, right? No matter what you do, you go this impact, she will move, right? 
right? Because she's pretending like I, I, won't, I won't hit her. But this is like what happened is that for the second shot, it's like if I do one, one, but I hold, I'm not going to hit her. Then you, what happened is she move. When she's coming back, then I hit her. That's the concept. Okay? Now, let's see. So you watch this time. I'm adding my upper body. Now you see, no matter what I did, she will stop. I go longer rally first. Longer rally first. Make her run. Make her run. Go. Right. Right. Body, upper body. You go, you're pretending you're going up. Have a push. But you slowly, you use your stroke to make it slow. That's a deception concept, right? Sometimes you can see when you come into the net, you're pretending you are doing this position. This is what? This position is what? It's a push. Am I right? Every time you see me push, then, sorry, should I do it one more time? You see me go up, push, but I'm doing a net, okay? Or you're going, you're going in, you go underhand like this, you're pretending you're doing a, a net, right? But if you add the speed, you add the speed, one, two, you stop, then your hands like quickly make up the time, then you become a push. Always think about when you look like a push, you're doing a net. When you jump up, have a big swing, you're pretending you smash, but you're dropping. You're making a, a big lift, stroke, like this, but you're do a net spin. Always thinking about this. Then it will become a deception stroke. Is it too complicated? Because I always, I always um, think a lot, of, uh, a lot of these things to make the, um, the skill better. Because I know that we can force them to do an hour footwork on court. That's impossible. That's why I always think about a lot of these things. And I'll have another thing that so we'll share it. Um, the grip. Like, I, I brought a team to Hong Kong to train one summer. And then I'll sit down on the bench. And one of my younger teammates, that he is pretty high level. He played probably three... He's a men's singles. He played three games against uh, Peter Gay at that time. He lost. And he played play Lin Dan very close two games. And then he said, you know, Jennifer, all the kids you brought back from, from Toronto, they're holding wrong grip. They're all holding wrong grip. I said, oh, my God. So I'm teaching something wrong. Then he showed me. Then this is how they're supposed to do it in, in single. Is they always like changing grip all the time. So he said, you have to show, you have to hold a backhand grip for all the, all the stroke. Then I don't get it. At that time, I learned it. I come back. I have students feed it to me. And I tried and try and try it, and then I'll find out. And recently, I even find out a little bit more about how to hold the grip and even don't make the stroke and make the skill even better for my player. Okay? So now, eh, I think traditionally, when you're coaching, they will forehand will do this way, backhand, you change grip and do them this way, right? But nowadays, they don't change grip. You can see all the doubles players, okay, or singles players, they don't change grip here and here because it's too slow. They basically, they forehand, they use these index fingers to push it off. Backhand, they use the thumb to push it off. They don't change grip anymore because it's not fast enough. And then you can see the men's doubles, they don't do this very seldom to do this anymore. They do more forehand because they will use like more generally more power from here. So if you think about it, if you're holding a backhand forehand grip, if you're holding this way, when the bird comes, right, you chop on the side. You're just chopping in front of you. The bird go diagonal. Right? But when you want to hit a cross court, most of you will face and cross or upper body turn. But if you're holding the right grip, Nowadays, the grip, and then you chop the bird, then the bird already go over to cross court, right? Especially Legion White specialty is what? Forehand smashing cross court. I was sitting in the gym 10 hours 
watching the tournaments. I'll figure out how come he cannot turn in the body, but he can smash cross. Right? The key is every time when you see the poster, that when he's holding a forehand grip, a backhand grip, but he's actually basically smashed to the cross court though. Right? And the concept is very simple. If you see the bird coming in front of you, you chopping the bird, then the bird will go this way, right? Without turning. So that means when one time you, you really want to cross court, you're high pretending you're going straight. Then you chop the stroke, then the bird will go cross. I, I try to introduce you to open up your mind and your eyes to learn things from the world player. Chatting with some of the good coaches around here. You won't be, I'm the speaker, I will be good. Right? Always get information from them. Right? Second thing, this is what we uh, learn from the skill part. Okay, Jennifer, how we can make the skill better? Okay, then I will see Tai Xu Ying, like very, maybe 10 years old or 12 years old, she can really like can do backhand clear. And I spoke to the coach, say, how come you can teach her backhand cross court clear? Can I teach my player like this? He said, no, Jennifer, I never taught her that. She's just born like this. Like you can see Lee Jong Wai walking to the center, not even squatting down. Why he can do that? You cannot do it. But behind the screen, you know, he's working so hard. Nobody knows. But the kids is always seeing the, how nice is the YouTube. Then they will just follow and say, okay, do you know, you know, they don't squat down. Why you have to tell me to squat down? No. They've done so many weightlifting at the back of the screen to create a more powerful on their lower body. Okay, second things, and when I coach Michelle, it's like always complaining, um, Jennifer, how I can modify my stroke smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, and uh, you know that she's an offensive player, and um, how, if they're not going to lift it to you, how many times when we go out, they know that she has a very powerful smash, nobody will lift it to her, obviously, right? It's so stupid, like lifting to you because I will die faster. So we find out we're using some of the material, like the cover. I'm working on the underhand stroke to modify her skill better, and so that when we play at the Commonwealth game, play against PV Sindhu, then we'll control more at the net. So you can see in the market, like I have, this is a material that you will be using to helping their creating their power. So when I talk to the Indonesia, uh, the Indian coach, I say, how come every single men single they can whip the bird so so hard? Okay, they say no, they don't train like this. They just born like this, and that obviously they're not telling you. So, <laughs> right? But when I'm talking to Taiwan, Taiwan coach, I said, how come your men singles? How come your uh, doubles, they can whip the bird so hard. I was the first thing that I would see Malaysian players. Well, they can, they can whip so hard, like, how could they do that? Right? Then we realize that, and then when I talked to Taiwan, they said they use a lot of this kind of cover to do a lot of swinging, racket swinging. I don't know if you guys know this. Okay, this cover is no hole, right? And then you can see through it. And that means that if for racket speed, when you want to have like powerful um, smash, you have to increase your, um, how to say it, record uh, speed. To When you see them, they smashing one shot, like 300 something, that's this cover. Okay? When you want to not making your stroke smaller and then don't pull your arm to hit the bird, you're using this kind of cover because the cover here is that it, there's a place here that you can hit with it. I can show you with Ray, uh, Rachel. And then these things that you just invent by one of the Japanese guys, and then they are using these for whip power for their wrists. And then these little things that, you know, you can see that it's nothing special. But when you really wrap on the racket, you can make the racket head 30 gram heavier. I try to find in the, some of the manufacturer to try to make some racket. I say, can you make a racket with a heavier head, flexible shaft? They say, yes, concept is right, but Jennifer, that's impossible for me to make you one racket like this. Because every time you whip it, the guy, the, the, the head will, 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 will fall off. So they have something, this two months ago, I find out these, and then these things can increase power on your wrist. What are these three different things? This one is for racket speed. Okay, that one is an underhand controlling. Okay, and also make your stroke smaller. And this one, it generates your wrist power. 
Okay, this one is very easy. When we're doing it, we went doing these drills. That's my secret. So showing everyone. Okay, you see in the middle. Okay, so we were, what we try to do is that we're working on the stroke only. So you stand close a little bit. Now what I'm trying to do is like we do this. You can do net. You can do lift. Right? Those are the things that this one will preventing you not swinging too much. Okay, then the other one that you can do it very easily is like we generate the power for the point smash at the back. We just clear it. So they try to see that you can accurately hit into the plate. Okay, when you use, use this kind of cover, make sure one thing is you can't do this. You can't hit it. Because this, this cover will decrease that the, you know, that's the draft in here, then you'll make your stroke smaller. And then another thing is how you can hit the bird with power and then with the shorter distance. It's like, I find it out when you're doing it, a lot of people that they will, what, swing. But swing will not give you more power. And then the key things that for single is we don't need heavier smash, but we need angle, shuttle speed, and the accuracy. So when we're doing it, the smaller stroke will be better. So when we do it, throwing something like to the box, the smaller stroke that you throw is better. If you do a bigger swing, then you'll make, make a mistake. But for double player, it's different. Okay, you the more stronger arm power that you have, you probably were smashing like, a, a, like really good. Okay, so when you're doing this, then I will look at it. I will probably do it this way. Okay, Rachel, you can come forward. Now you can see when you're doing it, you start from here and then you turn, then you hit the bird down. Okay, that flip will be generate your power. So when we're young, we play some of the game like this, right? When you're doing it, you turn. No, 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 don't move. You turn, you hit like this. It's that the flip that you hit, then you generate the power. That's, that's how you can be a short time, and then you can hit. And then second thing is that when you're doing it, this is the hand when you're doing it, a lot of people that they like to pull to the back, but when we're doing it, we're doing forward. And plus we add the wrist and add the fingers. When you're doing it, you can try to. When you're holding, holding up your left hand, and then when you're doing it, right, are you using your wrist and fingers? Most of you probably like, eh, how come no sound? You can try that afterward, and you'll see it. And then most of the time when we're doing it in skill, then we're using our wrists and we're using our fingers to generate the power from here. There's not much like big swing anymore. I can show you this. Rachel, you can toss. This way. Uh, I think you go this way, toss. Like a lot of people, they do this. They will flat like this, right, like this. Ooh, kill. Ooh, kill. It's so good, right? But what about if you are pressure, under pressure? Most of you will hit it outside because you're so crazy, you want to hit the bird, like kill them. But when you do this, like when you start with this stroke up and you flip, you see the impact, you see the angle. The angle will quickly go down. That's the concept that you flip your racket. That's a concept that you're using the cover. Is it amazing? Right? Where I learned this from? <laughs> I don't I don't create these. I usually sit down on the bench. I'm watching those Asian coaches play a training. And I figure out that one time I was seeing Lin Dan, he playing a cross court net so fast. So how could he do that? And then I just like sitting in the back and pretending I'm tying my shoes and then I just keep on watching him. So I'm good at scouting. When next time, they, they might know now because they're videotaping me now. So every time they might see me sitting around, they're okay, better than not letting her look at it. Okay, and then you can see when you're doing a cross court, like he was like this, he quickly, done, right, done. When we do a cross court, we do underhand, you have underhand, you do this and this, but it's not 
So everything is very simple. If any of your coach tell you, like, you have to do this, you have to do this, or we have to play like this, there's no fancy shots. It's just one very clear, right? And everyone right now, the cross-court net, all learning from what? From Spain. You have a Spain coach here? Yes. When we do the cross-court net, we do underhand. Carolina, upper here. What's the difference? Give you a little bit more. Just watch the time. Your underhand, you do this, right? Your underhand, you do this. Then the bird will going up. But she, what she does is chopping the bird. You can see the difference. The bird is going down. If I smash you here one time, you come up, she cross you over there, you're doing two turning. Then you turn, plus you have to add the speed over there. Otherwise, two shots, she can beat you. So how we can face this kind of player? We work on upper body flexibility, which is I don't have time today. I want to go through these if I have next opportunity because they are timing me. So I don't like, uh, this, is a, this is a very, um, um, I love coaching. The lo love coaching part, the coaching process, you learn from every single one in the world. You can, you can learn from a whole country like in the world. Like you have to make sure you open your mouth. You talk to them and get some secret from them. If they give you a little bit of tips, you will, improve, you will improve your coaching skill you know, very good. Okay? So um, the, the turning thing is actually helping you to create it to generate the speed power. Okay, the shuttle speed power. So you have to remember that. Okay, uh, questions? I always last five minutes, and, and, and which is I don't want to because I don't want to share my secret anymore. <laughs> hmm? Oh, this is a commercial thing. So you can, you can go online and check in, and they, they're selling this kind of product um, online. Some of the shop. Uh, I can talk to you after. Hi, um, a small you, technical question. Do you prefer a shorter movement or a, maybe a longer movement but faster movement? I would prefer shorter movement. Shorter mo movement with a quick return. That's most of the difficult part to, to play against. Right? When you see some of the good players, like men singles, lady singles, when they, when they go on court, they are so natural. They're pretending they are not moving fast. But basically, they're, not, they, they're like that. They, they're pretending they're not moving fast. But at the end, boom, boom. They're at the speed. Why is that? This is in singles, a lot of rhythm changing. The, the more that rhythm changing, it's better for you to beat your opponent because we have to break their starting. Right? So a lot of people that they jump up, they're pretending they are, they are smashing, but they drop into the center. That's what happened. Thank you, Rachel. See, recognize her face and see if she'll be good in the future. <laughs> so really, thank you, Rachel Chen. So, more questions? Oh, Tony. <laughs> this is my... One question that I always wonder whether the answer could be a different thing. One is actually about the pronation and the reverse slice. I usually don't try to tell them to go here because it's stopped. Your wrist stopped there. It's more natural. You go farther here. So what's your Now, we go back to the, the grip that I'm talking yeah. about. Traditionally, people, they hold the grip like this. Yeah. You see what happens if you hold a grip like this when you're bending your wrist? See the angle? It's only here. But if you're holding a backhand grip when you're pointing down, when you, use, when you do your wrist, you can see the angle is deeper. So that means that if you're holding the grip that traditional hold, then your bird will go long. But if I'm holding this grip, my bird will go in down. I always like watching, like, how come they can smash the bird so angle? And how come I can? And I'll figure out. You can see a lot of poster, the photo. You look at them, how they hold the grip. I have a bunch of uh, pictures on my phone. I can see all, all different kind of good players that they're holding the grip. So make sure that next time when you talk, uh, teach your student, then make sure you, you have to be holding the backhand grip, then you can do this. But even if you, but even if you hold, with a normal universal grip, right? 
you swing could be this way, which go a little bit farther. Yes. And if you go here, physically, it's actually stopped there. I mean, you see here, this stop there, or this one goes there. No, but, but you're wrong, because when we do the wrist power, we don't stop the wrist. Right? Because we have to swing it, and so that the racket head will coming back for the next one. Oh. If you tell them to stop like this, the bird coming here, how are you going to get it? You can't get it this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, right? I, I don't mean it's stop. It's just physically, it's here. Uh, of course, when you bounce like this, yes. it's okay. But if you, say when you do a slice drop, or yes. a fast, whatever, a half smash, it's much more natural to go this way than to go that way. That, uh, that's what I was okay, that's sure. then we refer back to the deception. Always talking about if your if your wrist is going this way, okay, then you always you tell your opponent that you hit the shots over there. Yeah. But if you hit them that way with the reversing drop like this, you can do a reversing drop yeah. like this, but you still can go to the cross. Yeah, that's the faking people, yeah. though. Okay. Right. That's that's more complicated though when you go to <laughs> high level. Questions. And make sure you don't hold the grip like, like tight, yeah, because you have to keep on changing your grip. OK, no more questions? So I'm getting my gift. <laughs> I see everyone have Thank it. You. And, Thank you, Jennifer. And you turn. know very well how it works. You did very well. Thank you so much uh, once again.